without Jamar Chase right now. Then RC, how about this moment here? Mike Purcell yelling at Russell Wilson coming off the field. I mean, listen, this is about the frustration that the defense is starting to feel, and they understand that Russell Wilson is supposed to be the leader of that offense. He was supposed to change things from Teddy Bridgewater last year, and those things aren't happening. I mean, right now, they're giving fake hugs in the locker room like Q and Bishop off of juice because you know your boy just ain't right. And when you are giving $250 million before you ever take a snap for a team, you are expected to play better than this and need to play better than Russell Wilson is. Well, you saw it, and, and uh, it, it trended immediately. Again, Mike Purcell yelling at Russell Wilson on the field as the Broncos lose again, their offense awful again. Here was Wilson being asked about it after the game. He was pissed off. He just said, we got we to gotta F and go, you know, and uh, – I agree, you know, so me and him on the same page, we, you know, we're, we're, there's no, uh, there's no uh, animosity there at all. We, we're on the same page. We, we, we got to win. Now they're not winning. And if their offense was doing anything, they would be. RC, you've got sort of an interesting looking, <laughs> uh, the body language is fascinating. Go. Guys, like I told y'all, right? Oh, in the off season, oh. in the off season, everybody know this is not for you guys. This is for the public. This okay. is not for you. In the offseason, everybody in my DMs, black America was just disgusted with me. Why would you tear another black man down and say <laughs> that he's not going to lead them to the Super Bowl? Told you. <laughs> I ain't lied, did I? Listen, when we looked at Russell Wilson and what he was able to do in Seattle, there was never a year where we said to ourselves, you know what, Russell Wilson is the best quarterback in football. And there was a time I played him in 14 on that night. I thought he was. There was never a time that Russell Wilson was transcendent of what a team could be or what a team could do. Never a time where he carried an offense. And I said, coming into this season, plugging in Russell Wilson to Denver does not mean you have a Super Bowl-ready offense. Well, guys, you don't even have a winning team offense. You don't even have a team that can compete in the AFC West offense. Hell, they probably could compete in the AFC South. And that's why you see this type of energy. I say it all the time to my kids and to my wife. Expectations are the largest breeding grounds for disappointment. It was all right last year because you didn't expect to be good. When you got Russell Wilson and he took the picture in front of his truck in his own jersey, coming to training camp, you thought that everybody in the stands would be wearing that jersey too. Now, people want to burn them like when LeBron took his talents to South Beach. <laughs> this offense, if they were average, so this down. team would be playoff contenders. And the they problem. can't even do that with the $250 million man. I think the problem is that uh, Russell Wilson went to Mile High, but he didn't take his talents with him. Mm. He left his <laughs> talents in Seattle. I think they'd be pretty happy if this was like when LeBron went to South Beach. Even though they fell short of the championship the first year, there was an immediate impact. The problem is, part of this problem is their defense is so good. Like, I think that, that breeds, uh, like, a, a resentment. Yeah, and it, yeah. They're looking at Russell Wilson the same way the Jets are looking at Zach Wilson. And that is not a good place to be when you are committed to um, Russell financially in a way that they're yeah. not committed to Zach. So this is a, a huge problem. Look, two coaches are going to get fired in Denver before they're going to give up on Russell Wilson, right? His, his situation, the brand-new ownership came in and gave him a quarter of a billion-dollar contract. It was the first thing they did. They're not giving up on Russell for a long time. When you consider the contract, Danny, and you consider everything they traded to get him. I mean, I'm seeing the words worst trade ever all over the internet right now. It feels that way because the, the things that hindered this offense and Russell's performance in the first month of the season that you could blame on the newness haven't gotten better. There, there is still this significant struggle to operate simple plays versus simple defenses. This offense has scored 14 touchdowns and 128 possessions. That is the worst rate in the NFL in the last decade. The Cleveland Browns went 0-16 in the course of that decade. Mm. Think about how bad you have to be offensively to get that done. And this is where Denver is, to Dom's point. They got a Super Bowl caliber defense. So they can't sit here and say, well, we're just going to get rid of the quarterback, sit there and say, we made the mistake and eat the salary cap issue, because then you get rid of all that young talent defensively that can win you a ton of games with. I have no idea what the Broncos are going to do. They're obviously going to move on from Nathaniel Hackett, and that's disappointing because I think he's a pretty darn good coach. And right now it's like they have to choose the quarterback because of the finances, 
but doesn't feel like that's the right decision for them moving forward with the way he's played this year. I mean, and they've literally only scored 20 points twice the entire season. It, th th that question on the bottom of your screen is not hyperbole. It's not nice, but it is the reality of the situation. It's feeling like as bad a deal as there has ever been. Meanwhile, you mentioned young quarterbacks. Well, uh, quarterbacks named Wilson. Yes. Uh, this has been a rough week for them. 